In the world of high-end fashion, few brands command the same level of prestige and admiration as Hermes. This luxury fashion house has a storied history that spans over two centuries, and its journey from a small workshop to a global fashion icon is nothing short of remarkable. Join us as we delve deep into the fascinating history of Hermes, tracing its origins, key milestones, and the enduring legacy of this iconic brand. Our journey begins with Thierry Hermes, the visionary founder of the brand. Thierry was born on January 10, the 1801, in Krefeld, Germany, just outside of Dusseldorf. His parents, a German mother and a French immigrant father, worked as innkeepers and had six children, with Thierry being the youngest. Tragedy struck the Hermes family when the Napoleonic Wars erupted, leading to several family members becoming casualties. To compound their misfortune, others succumbed to diseases of the time. In the face of these heart-wrenching losses, the Hermes family decided to seek a fresh start in 1828, relocating to pont ardemar in the north of Paris. It was in pont ardemar that the 27-year-old Thierry first began to learn the art of leather-making. Three years later, he and his wife Petro Neil Perriant welcomed their first son, Charles Emil Hermes, into the world who would eventually become the heir to the Hermes Empire. Thierry's early years were marked by adversity, but they also instilled in him an unyielding ambition. In 1837, at the age of 36, he established his first workshop in Paris, located on the now defunct Rubus de Rampart. His goal was to craft the highest quality harnesses and bridles for his discerning clientele, primarily comprised of French noblemen and carriage businesses. From the very beginning, Thierry understood and appreciated his customers' expectations. In a city teeming with innovative fashion trends, they desired simplicity and lightness, and Thierry delivered precisely that. His harnesses were an immediate success, embodying discreet fitness and endurance. This commitment to quality and craftsmanship earned him an award at the Universal Exhibition of 1867. However, after several decades of harness making, Thierry Hermès passed away in 1878 at the age of 77, leaving behind a legacy of excellence and dedication to craftsmanship. With Thierry's passing, his son, Charles Emile, assumed the responsibility of carrying the Herm S name forward. Charles Emile relocated the workshops to 24 Faubourg Saint Anne and opened a store. He began catering to the elite across Europe, Russia, North Africa, Asia, and the Americas. Under Charles Emile's leadership, Herm ES continued to ascend, and he designed the now famous Hau Karois bag designed to allow riders to carry their saddles. The bag was a resounding success, and the brand's reputation continued to grow. During Charles Emile's tenure, an important innovation would leave an indelible mark on the brand. Emile Maurice, one of Charles Emile's sons, encountered a fascinating invention while visiting Canada the Zipper. Recognizing its potential, he introduced a patent for the design, becoming the first in France to do so. In the late 1910, Hermès Forest designed the first clothing and handbags incorporating the zipper, giving rise to the Hermès zipper. News of this innovation quickly spread throughout France and beyond. As Hermès continued to flourish, Émile Maurice joined forces with his sons-in-law, Robert Dumas Hermès, Jean Ren Guérant, and Francis Puich, each bringing their unique expertise and vision to the brand. By 1914, Hermès was supplying saddles to the Tsar of Russia and employing up to 80 saddle craftsmen. However, the decline in sales of horse harnesses and equipment in 1919 
prompted Adolf Herm S., one of Emil's sons, to leave the company with Emil Maurice buying out his brother. In 1922, the first leather handbags were introduced in response to Emil Maurice's wife's complaint about not being able to find a suitable bag. These handbags were essentially smaller versions of the Ha Kuroys. Hermes continued to expand its product offerings, introducing jewelry in 1927, followed by watches and sandals in 1928. A decade later, the brand unveiled its iconic silk scarf, an instant hit that garnered attention from celebrities such as Jacqueline Kennedy. Soon after, silk ties and perfumes were added to the brand's repertoire. Each product proved to be a massive success, solidifying Hermes' reputation as a purveyor of luxury. After the passing of Emile Maurice, the brand transitioned to the leadership of Robert Dumas. Dumas, a non-descendant of the family, had much to prove, but his impact on Hermes was undeniable. Early in his tenure, he designed the ubiquitous horse and carriage logo. However, it was in the 1930 that a momentous event occurred in Hermes's history. In 1956, Hollywood actress turned Monaco Princess Grace Kelly was famously photographed carrying an Herm S. Sack DP chess to cover her pregnant belly. This image, published on the front cover of Life magazine, catapulted the bag into stardom. It was subsequently renamed the Kelly Bag, marking a turning point for Herm SS as it transitioned from an exclusive luxury brand to a household name. Throughout the 1960 and 1970, Hermes continued to enjoy commercial success. However, challenges loomed on the horizon as the luxury fashion industry embraced man-made and technologically engineered materials like nylon, polyester, and vinyl. In contrast, Hermes remained committed to using only the highest quality natural materials, which came at a premium. The future appeared uncertain for the brand until 1978 when the company changed hands once more, returning to the Hermes family. This shift would ultimately set the stage for a new era of innovation and growth. From 1978 onwards, Jean-Louis Dumas, a descendant of Thierry Hermes, took the helm. As the son of Robert Dumas, the grandson of Emile Maurice and the great-grandson of Thierry Hermès, ambitious innovation, ran deep in his veins. Jean-Louis embarked on a mission to revolutionize the brand, diversifying its product offerings and rejuvenating it for a modern era. As Hermès was no longer a brother-owned business, he renamed it and refined the focus to three essential product lines, ready-to-wear, silk scarves and leather goods. As we reflect on the incredible journey of Hermes, we are reminded that behind every iconic brand lies a rich tapestry of history, innovation, and unwavering dedication to excellence. Hermes is more than a fashion house. It is a living testament to the enduring pursuit of beauty, craftsmanship, and luxury that transcends generations. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through the history of Hermes. If you enjoyed this video and want to explore more inspiring stories and fascinating content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell.